Hey guys, in this video I want to share with you my review of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus and the review is, I love it, it is the best smartphone I've ever used, that's it, job done. But instead of a review, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my best tips and tricks on how to set this baby up because the one thing I noticed about Android phones in general is that they are a bit more tricky to get the best out of than iPhones. So strap yourselves on, get on this jetpack roller coaster of a ride because I'm going to be sharing with you the power user's setting for the Note 10 Plus. Numero uno, this is the best feature in the history of the world. Look, I'm on YouTube, I'm watching a bit of BJ action happening and boom shakalaka, multi-screen apps. I can go hit Chrome, go down there and I've got a browser and, and I've got Boris on the top. Things are amazing on this phone and better yet, look what else you can do. I'm going to go instead, I'm going to close this multi-screen app out. I'm going to go, boom, what's this? What's this? Landscape view. You can set this up to do landscape. Look at that. Long press there, home screen settings, rotate to landscape mode. And this is very useful if you have some notifications on the top, you can see more of the messages when it's in landscape mode. So that is another setting. Also, I don't just have Chrome installed. I have Firefox installed and I'll show you exactly why. Boom shakalaka, I've got Chrome, hit there, multi-screen app and go ahead and launch Firefox. Drag that down. Now I've got two browser windows. I can be finding out about the ATO and finding out what's happening in the latest version of iPad OS. This phone is amazing. Biometrics and security. So if you don't know, face recognition is not secure. People can unlock it with a video of your face. Just be aware of that before using it. Fingerprints, however, I've heard people have issues with the fingerprint reader, me, myself, and I, I kind of love it, it works for me, but what I've done is I've actually registered a few of my fingers multiple times. So what I do is when I register the fingerprints, I go like that, then like that, then like that, then like that, then like that, and I mix up the thumbs and the fingerprints and I register them all four times to get lots of different credentials and look at that. Fingerprint reader can be seen right there. I also make that visible. It always works. I don't know what people complain about. Look, even the side. Now I want to talk to you about battery optimization. So click settings over here and click on device care and then hit battery. Now I have this set up to a T. Adaptive battery is on, unused app to sleep and sleeping apps. Now sleeping apps, I pretty much put every single frigging application in there because I want the applications when they go into the background, the SDF up. So that means they all go to sleep. Now there are some applications which I don't, which for example, Gmail. I like having Gmail giving me my email notifications. Google, I find that when I let Google go to sleep, hey Google doesn't work. Maps, I find that if I need to switch applications really quickly, it shuts down. Photos, I like backing up my photos in the background, so I don't add that. So there are a few applications which I don't put to sleep, and if you run into any issues, just remove your applications from this list, but pretty much I got everything on there. Saves battery life, amazing. I don't have battery optimization settings turned on. I previously had that on on my S9 and I ran into lots of issues with accessing background services. So I just leave that off and I custom disable my sleeping apps myself. Now there is another thing you can do to help your life out and that is called Reboot. Inside General Management Reset, you can have your phone to automatically restart every single day. And what that does is it keeps your memory all nice and happy. I personally haven't had to use this option on this amazing phone so you don't need to use it. But if you run into any issues, some applications, they need to just force restart. You got that restart every single day, usually set it to like this, boom. I did that on my S9 and like 3 a.m. it will restart the phone fresh as a baby's bottom when you start it up the next day. Now something a lot of you guys miss is that this phone actually has amazing sound. What you need to do, however, is enable it. You swipe to the right, you'll miss it, but there's something called Dolby Atmos and it's disabled by default. So you make sure that it's ticked and the sound sounds better. Another tip. Now this notch over here isn't really a notch. It's barely visible. I kind of like it now. I've lived and been happy, but there's something called full screen apps. You go into that section, full screen apps, boom shack like full screen apps. You tap on that, advanced settings, hide camera cutout. Look what happens. It drops it down and the camera is now completely gone. This is like a Note 9. Personally, I've gotten used to the camera little bindi, so I'm happy with it, but if you don't like it, you can always disable it for some apps. Next up, I'm gonna show you the S Pen, and when I got the S Pen, I figured it was a bunch of rubbish, but there is amazing features to be had in here, and you can customize this list, hit on settings, you hit shortcuts, 
and you decide which apps you want to be visible. Personally, I have got beef with Bixby, so I haven't enabled that guy yet. But these are the apps you get out of the box. But the best app you can get is you tap on this little icon that floats around here, something called Smart Select. And look at that, you can select any text on the screen. Hit Extract Text, OCR, Boom Shakalaka, it tells you exactly is. So any application that doesn't let you copy and paste text, you can use this S Pen for it. And better yet, there's an application, and my wife loves this application. It's called Pen Up. This is like social networking for people who like pens. Look at this little kid. Now, you must be thinking, oh my God, how am I gonna draw this amazing cat? Boom, shakalaka, learn to draw. You can go ahead and trace. Now, I'm not that good, but you can go ahead and trace. You kind of got an outline of how they did it. I might pick the two advanced one to show you guys, but look at this, it's gonna come out amazing. Eyes like this, circle, boom. Look at the difference. This is my cat and this is their cat. Who has the better cat? Look, you can trace. This is an amazing app, amazing pen. And if you have any mates who are iPhone users, this application here, Live Messages. Now you might think this is a bit, you know, home, but look what you can do. I'm gonna take a picture of my beautiful face. And then I'm gonna say, I love, you look at that done it saves it as a friggin mp4 file you can send this or whatsapp to your love and they'll get play back this message in a magical look at that magic beautiful can you do this on ios no you can't because you're rubbish now for you unorganized messes out there you want to be going into apps folder and tidying the f up out of it I organize things into folders because I don't use this, but I find when I install new applications, I wanna see what's going on. So there's an option called sort, sort it alphabetically. Any app that's Google, put it in the Google photo. Any app that's Samsung, put it in a Samsung folder and stay organized. Look at me, I know exactly all the new apps I put in here and I keep everything nice and tidy. Oh wow, this is amazing, this swipey bit. How did I do that? You gotta install an app called Good Luck. And this allows me to change this task switcher. I personally don't like it. So what we require is going to Samsung and the Galaxy Play Store for once. And you want to search for good lock install. I think this requires internet access. So enable when the screen is on. And I'm going to install the task changer. What this does, it allows it to be a vertically scrolling list. As you can see, one, two, three, four, rather than just one, two, three. It's now installed. So when I tap on that button, We've got the old sort of swipey screen. And what I love about this is if you wanna do a split screen app, you can just tap and hold the app icon to drag up to split screen view. So for example, if I wanna launch Chrome below, and now I've got split screen view. I find this method of split screening to be a lot more intuitive and fun to use. See, they both have ultra wide band and ultra wide band. What's that? You've got a dual screen. Two screens, mother. Now, other things you might want to do is make this app grid big. Look at that, hold this, long press, higher home screen options. Make the home screen grid side big. App screen gets grid side big. Swipe down for notification panel. Enable that. Add apps to home screen. Enable that. Because when you install a new app, you want to know that it's been added to your home screen like it does on iOS. And swipe down notification panel. Look, you don't need to be daddy long legs with your arms and fingers and thumbs. You can just swipe down from the middle. Amazing. And while you're there, why don't you go ahead and move that notification panel to the top? So I'll swipe down like this to see the full menu screen and show the control on top. So what that means is when I swipe down, I can easily and quickly change the brightness setting. And while you're here, tap on that power button there and make sure side key settings. You don't want to wake up Bixby anymore. You want to power off menu. By default, long pressing on this button launches Bixby, but I hate Bixby. So if you tap on that power button, side key settings, and rather than it waking Bixby, I want it to display the power off menu. So now when I hold this button down, it will display this power menu and Bixby is pretty much almost gone. Next up, I'm gonna hold this down, go here, and I'm gonna disable Bixby home. So now Bixby is out of my face and I'm happy in the world. While we're talking about uninstalling and disabling shitty apps, go ahead and 
uninstall the shitty apps. I personally don't like these widgets, so I'm just gonna remove from home. So Samsung, internet, uninstall. So now I'm gonna go into apps, Facebook, disable, that's trash. If you wanna use Facebook, use it on the web. Galaxy wearable, uninstall, I don't have a smartwatch. Game launcher, disable, I don't use it. Google Play movies and TVs, I hate that application. Google Play Music, rubbish. Kids Home, unfortunately, I am an adult, so I don't need that. LinkedIn, uninstall, rubbish. OneDrive, don't use, disable. Outlook, bye bye, Gmail. Samsung Global Goals, Samsung Pay, uninstall. Wow, you can uninstall that. Secure folder, I actually don't use that. Smart Switch, this allows you to transfer from a phone to another phone. I'm not gonna use it, so I've disabled that. And instead, install some good apps. Now I'm gonna install some few favorites. Messages by Google. Google one, install. Keyboard, install. Don't auto update apps. Especially if you don't value privacy, you can always use Google Keyboard and passwords for password management and keyboard settings because they synchronize with Google Chrome. In the keyboard setting, which is in input, I change the spelling correction service. I change it from Samsung keyboard to Google spell checker. And I also changed the autofill service from Samsung pass to Google. That way all my passwords from Chrome that are saved on there get automatically pre-filled on any application that I run. The very next thing I like to do is go into about phone and enable developer mode. So you tap on build number a few times, enter in your pin and now developer mode has been enabled. And what this allows is to speed up the user interface. So I'm gonna click on developer options here. And it's got so many cool settings. For example, demo mode, night mode, USB debugging, all these kind of goodness. But the setting I'm gonna change here is animation speed. So by default, animations, to me, they're a bit slow. So I like making them 0.5. It makes the phone feel a lot more snappy. Look at that, very fast, very slick. So now that I've done that and I've enabled the developer mode, I'm actually gonna install a firewall on this device and I'm using an open source firewall called NetGuard. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And if you're interested in building and running the firewall yourself, again, it's free and open source, check out the video in the description below to do exactly just that. So I'm gonna plug in my phone and in developer options, I'm just gonna enable USB debugging. Do you wanna allow this computer to USB debug? I'm just gonna say yes. So now in the drop down menu, Samsung N975F should appear. And I'm just gonna hit run. This will compile and deploy the firewall straight on the Android device. You can also deploy it via just transferring over the APK, but I figured I'd show you this way because I showed the other way in the tutorial video that I made earlier. So it's now installed the firewall on the phone. So I'm just gonna unplug it and I'm back, to, back in action. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set up this firewall, agree. And I'm gonna go into settings, defaults. By default, I want it to block Wi-Fi and block mobile. And uh, that's my default settings. And in options, I like using dark theme. And this does take extra battery, but I do like advanced monitoring. So you can manage system apps. So you can block Google if you want. So I can log internet access. So every single time an application wants to use the internet, I'll know about it. Notify on internet access, it's gonna give me a notification. Filter traffic, that allows me to filter every single call the application makes, not just allow on and off. So you can block some websites and allow others. Track the number of bytes sent per application. So if you're worried about people uploading rogue data and these settings will be on, it will eat into your battery, but you don't need to enable all the settings like I have. I'm just gonna enable NetGuard. Don't ask again. Make sure that it's not being turned off. Perfect. And that is it. So by default, every single application on this phone, its internet is blocked and it's up to me to allow it to allow it. For example, you go into Chrome and there's a global allow, you can tap on that and now will always allow mobile data and Wi-Fi to work even in the background or you can have conditional allows. For example, allow Wi-Fi 
only when the screen is on. When the application is in focus, it's gonna allow you to connect via Wi-Fi. When the application is in focus, it's gonna allow you to connect via mobile. So for stuff like Chrome, I have it always enabled, but I'll show you what happens when an application tries to use the internet for the first time. And if you notice, look at all these applications trying to use the internet in the background. So YouTube, I only allow that when the screen's on. Don't need to know about that. Messages, I will allow that one since that one I can sign into my messages in the background. Gboard, to be honest, I don't want that access in the internet. I'm happy for Google not logging my keys. In display, you want to use dark mode because it saves battery life, less pixels on the screen being turned on. You want to use max res because why the F not? This has a massive battery, you can handle it. Disable edge screen, it always is buggy and pops up randomly. Maybe you want it, I don't want it. Accidental touch protection, disable that. It is buggy at night time. It's meant to mean when you put your phone in your pocket, it doesn't tap on the screen. But instead when it's dark at night, it doesn't let you tap on the screen. Dumb, Samsung, fix it. For now, disable it. And camera people, these are the settings for the camera you wanna use. 4K everywhere, look at that. I've got scene optimizer, off, shot suggestions. It's fun, but off, unless you need it, you know. Come on, if you need it, then I'm not gonna complain. Hold shot about button, takes a picture or burst shots. It's up to you. You choose what you want. Save options though, that's important. You can use HEIF, it's better than JPEG. Even better, raw, you can go crazy. Shape correction, amazing. Make it 4K, make it 4K. Video recording, you want to turn high efficiency video, HEVC, it is better quality. But no, if you try to enable HDR, it will disable it. So keep HDR off, it's stupid, it's beta, it doesn't work. And for video stabilization, my friends, don't enable that. Video stabilization makes your footage smooth, but if you look carefully, it'll be blurry. Don't have that enabled. Instead, if you want to use video stabilization, do you know what you do? In video, there's a friggin' option called video stabilization. Super steady, and it's even more stable, look. All right, not, not, not a good example, but it works better. You tap that on, tap that off, rather than always going to the menu and video stabilization. All right, so that was a lot to take in. You probably didn't even make it to this part of the video because it was too damn long, wasn't it? Well, have I missed anything out? Can this phone become more powerful than what I've shown you? Let me know in the comment section below and hope you enjoyed the show.